are fully committed. How many of us are fully committed?
Jason after you. Are you chasing after him? Hallelujah! Are you chasing after him on this morning?
today and throughout the week. I just want to thank God that I need to talk right now because I had to get rushed to the emergency room. Sometimes people don't know what you go through in a week. You come here looking at tech, you look good, you put a smile on your face, but you know what people go through in a week. And I just want to thank God because I thank God I need to talk because all of a sudden, when I was on the way to my night job this week, my mouth and my tooth and gum just start hurting so bad. I was in excruciating pain. And I was actually going to go out, to, out the door that night. And I could not do it. I called my supervisor like eight times. She didn't answer. She must have been asleep. And I left her. Um, I had to get Jay to leave her a detailed message. And I was hurting so bad. I had to take myself, all of us, to the emergency room. And when I got there, I was waiting and waiting, and it was making my chest hurt and everything. Jesus. And my ears was like vibrating. Jesus. And I, I don't believe I could have sung that song. That's why I said I must be close.
church announcements for today, this evening, and throughout the week. Please keep them in mind and serve us into the hands of the praise and, I'm sorry, we're going to do offering, we're going to put it in the hands of our usher, and then the praise and worship team will send us into the offering. But let me tell you the ways of giving. Go to Givelify, Solid Rock, at the Solid Faith Church. You will see Pastor Barbara Abraham's picture. Use the Sunday morning option. The other option, Cash App. Dollar sign, Solid Rock, AFC, all lowercase. Through the mail, Solid Rock at the Solid Faith Church, P.O. Box 358, Wendelstown, Maryland, 21133. Or, come on up. You can put your offering in on, per in on person, and I would like to call someone up. Um, Sister Juanita, would you mind? Amen. And um, you can give your money, your check, um, to the offering in person. Those are the ways of giving into the hands of the usher, and then the praise and worship team. Those that have been Hallelujah. 
based on what they committed. Any committed people in here on today? You're committed to the Lord. Hallelujah. Who is committed? I give my life. Who is committed to you? My God, my, my God, that's the best thing that you could ever do is give your life, your whole life, your entire life. Oh, Shabbat, it is here, my heart. Thank you. 
Then we're going to drop down to verse 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that it came to pass afterward that he loved the woman in the valley of Sora, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see where in his great strength lies. And by what means we may prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. And the Lord said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, where in thy great strength lies, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to thee. Verse 15. And uh, she said unto him, How canest thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me where in thy great strength lies. It came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. That he told her all his heart and said unto her, there have not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite. For I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when the Lord saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent a call for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this way. For he has shewed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon me. And she called for a man and, he, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee. And he awake out of his sleep and said, I will go out at other times before, shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him, put out his eyes, and brought him down the gaze bound him with feathers of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. How be it? The hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered themselves together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their God. And to rejoice, for they said, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, our God has delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And, that they, call, and they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Yeah. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. I want you to see this word sport yeah. is here several times. I mean, they were mocking him and making fun of him and laughing and rejoicing over his demise. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, oh God, that I may be at once avenged. 
revenge of the Philistines from my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up of the one with his right hand and of the other with his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the Lord and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Now I want you to look at somebody right now and I want you to get real serious about it because it is a serious matter. And everyone, amen, everyone, everyone, amen, that is a decent age, amen, is facing, amen, such a situation. I don't know what your situation is, you don't know what my situation is, but we have situations, am I right? Yeah. But whatever that thing is, whatever, whatever, whoever it is, whatever it is, that the enemy is trying to get to you. Amen. For your failure and your demise to defeat you and keep you from fulfilling the will of God in your life, trying to get you never to reach your destination, whatever that is. Look them in the face and look them in the eyeballs right now and tell them right now it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Mm, he's playing with your mind, but tell him again what? It's not worth it. Look him in the eyes and tell them again. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Oh my God. It's not. It's not. It's, it's not. It's, it's not. Amen. And there's nobody in here that's excused from it right now. Amen. Nobody's excused from it. Is there anybody in here that the devil's not talking to? He don't talk to you. He don't talk to you. I mean, the devil don't talk to you. Oh. So it means that he talks to every last one of us in here. Amen. The saved, the unsaved, the fasting. Amen. Those who never. The devil talks to us. He talks to us. He has plans for us. It's not worth it, young lady. 
and it keeps on talking, and I keep on letting it flow in me, and I don't put it out, I don't correct it, I don't rebuke it, because I like it, why my flesh like it, yeah. and it gets on my nerves anyway in that shirt, come on, the devil won't bring that in the door, because he's trying to get you out of the wheel, they ain't treating you right, you might as well go on about your business. I repent. I repent. Lord, I repent. 
another one of them. Oh, hey. Get, oh, you don't go to church. You don't belong in church. Go get a drink. Call Johnny. Call Sue. Call Samantha. Come on now. But you want out of this misery? Go have some fun. Have fun. Go get yourself some fun. So then I might go call myself getting some fun. But it's something about God that keeps pulling at my heart. And you know I'm stuck. And I can't get out. I'm doing everything they telling me to do. And I cry and I hurt because I really don't want to do it no more. But I don't have no more control. I can't even control it anymore. They got me. They got me. But God's mercy comes by me. Because he's a merciful God. Now I want you to understand 
He don't have to have mercy. The Bible said he'll mercy on who he will. He don't have to have mercy. He can let you stay like that. Some people have died and gone to hell. But thank God he is a merciful God. So just have a little bit of sense. We'll say, I don't know what God's going to do. But I do know he's a loving God. I do know he's a merciful God. So I'm going to fall on the mercy of the court. Yes, his court. I'm going to do this again. However many times. I don't care how many times it's been. Because he's a merciful God. His will is not that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So prayerfully, he'll be willing to hear my cry. And he will make all of these dead move. 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 Get up. Get out. Good in the moment, 
But when it's all said and done and everything is over, you're going to realize it was not worth it. It was not worth it. It wasn't worth it. Ask David, it wasn't worth it. Amen. He was a man after God's own heart, but then he became a man. But God is a faithful God. God is a great God. God is a wonderful God. God is a merciful God. David was just sending up a storm, doing all kinds of crazy stuff, hurting other people. Because once you get involved, the devil just blind your senses, blind your eyes, and you're just having yourself a ball and going on about your business. You know, because we were blind one time when Jesus opened up our eyes. But when you go back in the sand, you get blinded. And you really don't see everything like you need to be seen. You don't get it. It's really not clear. But thanks God for his mercy that God sent Naaman to David. And just gave him a little parable about a man that had so many lands and how he had so many lands. And then there was another lady that had one new land. And he put the land in his chest and it was like a door unto him. You know, so he left it. And he said that when he had company, he went to the man one new land. And he killed it and gave it to his um, guest. Look at David being a shepherd coming from being a shepherd. He was so mad and he said, that man, I'm to die. And Nathan looked at him, Nathan looked at him and said, thou art the man. You the man. You the man. Because you took your right to hit tight's wife. You got all these wives. You took that man's one wife. You took that man's one wife. Now, David, this is the good part. God has forgiven you for your sins. Now let me tell you something. That's the best part. That's the best part that can ever come into any of our lives is that God has forgiven us for our sins. No matter what they were. When God forgives you, that's the best thing you could ever have. That's right. All right? Because you have forgiveness from God. You can have your relationship with God. Amen. You ain't going to have to go to hell. You're going to realize that it wasn't worth it. Sometimes it's in the midst of the journey of the sin you realize that it wasn't worth it. Uh -huh. And it's up to God to say whether or not that's enough or not. But in David's case, he was just going on his merry way. This is a tough one. But I got to cover it up, though. Got to cover it up. I had me no ball. A real good boy. He was fine. Like mine. <laughs> Cover that up. Cover it up. Cover it up. But then it got out. And then when Nathan gets there and he tells David this, and he tells David, he said, David, you took that man's wife, blah, 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 blah. He said, now you did that in secret. He said, well, somebody gonna sleep with all your wives. And they're going to do it in the open. Because God going to tear you up for that. He going to beat your boo. His son stuck with all his wives. On top of the roof. On top of the roof. So imagine now your wives are being raped. Because I'm sure they didn't want to do it. You understand? But he slept with them. I don't know if Bethsheba wanted to do it, but you was the king. You called for her, had that woman come to your palace, and you slept with her. You understand what I'm saying? So, David, it's not worth it. He said, now you done had your right to hit tight, kill by the enemy's sword. The sword is never going to leave your house. The sword is not going to leave your house, David. So what happens is one son rapes the door. The son rapes the door. The daughter goes to her brother, because they weren't, they weren't, they weren't whole brothers and sisters, that's what people call it. So she goes to where her brother was. Her brother's like, okay, well, you can stay here, stay here, you know. He stopped speaking to his brother. He devised the plan. And once he got the plan together, he called for the sons of the king to come. And when the sons of the king came, 
the one that also raped his sister, and he told his servants to kill him. So now he has killed his own brother. Okay? He's killed his brother. He has to run for his life. He goes away. David doesn't try to get in touch with him and things like that. He is angry about what David has done because it didn't seem like David handled the situation when the rape took place. It didn't seem like he did anything really about it. You don't see that in the Bible. All right? And so now he is upset with his father. He's upset. So when he does come back, he goes be at the gate when the people come through the gate. He's like, oh, the king didn't see you today. Because you got some people like that. Oh, if I was the king, I would bet this on you. And what's your, what's your problem? What's your problem? Because I will help you out. So now he's counting the people at the gate because he's trying to steal the kingdom away from his own father. But this is a penalty. This is a penalty. See, the devil ain't going to tell you it ain't going to be worth it. I'm forgiven, but it ain't going to be worth it. Because the devil going to leave some stuff behind. That's going to be bothering me. Some couldn't want to shoot. Anybody got some couldn't want to shoot? No, I don't know have some couldn't want to shoot. Oh, some stuff that you had done in your life. Oh, come on. Everybody else in here telling lies. I could have wish that I should have. But I didn't. So this is what I had to do. Huh? Don't you jump on the bandwagon, huh? Trying to hurt somebody. 
brought him down because his son was dead. His son was dead. And he's like in a depressing state when he should be rejoicing because he's the king and they've got victory over king's enemies. But he's not rejoicing. He's sad and he's so sad. And now the people, of course, is going to be sad because he is the king. And Joab went in there and said, look, listen here. Let me tell you something. You know, get yourself together. Get yourself together. And get up here like you can be real and get happy. We all gonna leave you. We gonna leave. I tell you what, he got his stuff together. He had to wipe those tears away from his eyes. Yes, he did. And he had to go out there and act like the king and show some joy about his enemies being defeated. That's what he had to do. Listen, when you look at Judas, Judas, it wasn't worth it. That 30 pieces of silver that they said they was going to give Judas, they gave it to him. The sell Jesus out, they gave it to him. See, because somebody, the devil's trying to tell you to sell somebody out, but it's not going to be good for you. It's not going to be worth it. It's not going to be worth betraying them. It's not going to be worth But he betrays Jesus. And after he betrays them, and he sees how they take Jesus, and then he goes back and says, look, I don't want this money. He said, I betrayed the innocent blood. I don't want this money. And they said, what is this to us? He threw it down. And they picked it up and purchased the potter's field. Wow. And what he did, because he couldn't handle what happened because of what he had done. And this is where the devil want to get you. Don't let him get you there. You hear what I'm saying? Don't let him get you there. Because his goal is to take you out while you're in yourself. And he got to Jesus. And he went and hung himself. And his bowels pushed out. And it was already prophesied that this is what would have happened. But he had opportunity to say it won't be me. It had to be somebody, but it's not going to be me. It's not going to be me. So he died in his sin. You don't have to die in your sin. The devil is a liar. If the devil has gotten you down, you don't have to die like that. You don't have to die in that condition. Samson gave in to the adversary. God talked over and over again. And the things that he was told not to do as a Nazarite. You look in that Bible, you see him doing this one and that one and doing that. And God told him not to do it. And God was still being mercy. And God was still giving him strength. And God was still letting him conquer the enemy. And God was still giving him the victory. But this time. Thank you. 
recovery time. <clears throat> but a woman, I'm sorry, but the truth is the truth. <laughs> That's <laughs> I'm God in you. I'm God in you. She knows how to get where she wants. Mm -hmm. So she worked on him and kept working on him. The 
supernatural is inside of your natural God of yourself has come down on the inside of you. But the devil don't ever want you to realize what's really there and power in you. Because he wants to defeat you and keep your mind blinded so you'll never use it against him. Because God has he did it in you that he did it in the world. Oh God. Yeah, but I want you to come to the realization that I got power in Jesus. I got power in Jesus. And I can use the power of God against every demonic spirit that comes against my life. I, I will not be defeated because God is on my side. Victory belongs to me because God is on my side. It is not me, but it is the Christ that dwells.
him and they put him in the gas. They bound him. And they took him and made him cry in the pit in the prison. Yeah. Cry in the mill in the prison. Yeah. And one day they decided they was going to have a party, they was going to have a celebration, and they were going to worship their God, their God. And they got all their people together, thousands of them, thousands on the rooftop, many inside of the house or whatever they were using. And they brought her and they said, huh, look, you know, we worship your day, God, and we're grateful, you know, he gave us um, our enemy, you know, he was, he was turning us up, but they gone, giving them over to our hand. Their God didn't do nothing. His own God did. That's right, see? Hey, hey, come on now, make that clear. They God didn't have no power. So it did. His own God did. Right. Mm -mm. Power. All these times, while those scriptures, we see Samson not calling on God. I'm scared. You don't see him calling on God. But this time. Hey, hallelujah. The Bible said they brought him out so that he can make them support. So they can laugh at him. So they could mock at him. And that's what the demon be doing. Ah! <laughs> That's what they be doing. Oh, he chased him. Oh, she burned him in the face. Oh, the attack! Oh, this is how it. I'm just trying to tell you. This is true. This is true. I'm trying to tell you. Because the devil lands at God's people when he get a hold of us, and he he is turning us to pieces. Oh, they cry. Oh, boy, good. Oh, 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 you had all that power, you could have defeated him. <laughs> but you know, he fooled you. <laughs> you know, he fooled you like that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I ain't going to never let you go. I'm going to kill you first. Oh, my I'm gonna God. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to grind your nose with that God. <laughs> That's what it is. And I'm going to hold you up before God so he can see. Oh, my God. Because you, you're so precious to him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show him how you look right now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I couldn't wait to do it because I hate him. Oh my God. That's why I was like, you, because I hate him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And he just smiled. And they laugh and they give me high fives. That's not good of a high five. I'm just telling you how to do it. Give it high fives. And then there's people that want to see your demise. And then they see it, they laugh, and they talk to about it. Yeah. Child, did you hear the latest news? Yeah. Did you hear the latest news? And it's unfortunate that it's some folks that's in church that didn't want people to make it.
of the soul, the purpose of discipline is supposed to be to the saving of the soul. Why do you beat your children? Unless you're an abusive person. Unless you're an abusive person. You beat your children so that they will learn the lesson and not do it again. That's why God does what he can. God is not out here trying to kill us or we would all be dead out here. And burning in hell. So I have got to tell you Don't nobody love us like God loves us. Don't nobody love us like God loves us. Don't nobody love us like God loves us. 